Chapter 11. A Gumball Surprise. Zip, look out! The girls shouted. Don't hit him! Ricky screamed at the driver of the speedboat. The children waved their hands frantically to warn him. The dog had grabbed the ball in his mouth and, still directly in the path of the onrushing boat, started toward shore. He surely would be hit if he was not seen in time. Suddenly, Sue shrieked as only four-year-old girls can. The man heard her. He glanced at the children who were pointing at Zip. Instantly, he swerved his boat. Zip was safe. Oh, good, Pam cried. Everyone sighed in relief. But Joey Brill, who had not seemed worried, was grinning because Zip was bringing him the ball. You almost made Zip get hit, Holly called to him. I did not, Joey replied. Your dog didn't have to chase my ball. You knew Zip would go after it if you threw it into the water, Pete declared hotly. So what, Joey shouted. He ought to be smart enough to get out of a boat's way. Who is this boy? Uncle Russ asked, frowning. He's certainly a troublemaker. He sure is, Ricky agreed. He told his uncle about how Joey Brill was always pestering the Hollisters, as well as being a nuisance around the town. He took cookies away from Bobby Reed, too, Sue spoke up. By this time, Zip had reached the shore with the ball still in his mouth. He dropped it at Joey's feet. Then, as the boy bent over to pick it up, Zip shook himself vigorously. The muddy water from his long coat splashed over Joey's face and clean white shirt. Hey, get away, the boy shouted. You're getting me all wet. Instead of running away, Zip only shook himself harder and Joey's light-colored pants were covered with brown spots. The Hollister children could not help from giggling. Serves him right, said Ricky under his breath. I'll get even with you for this, you and your fresh dog, Joey shouted. He backed off a short distance, then leaned down and picked up a heavy stick. Don't you dare throw that stick at my dog, Pam cried out and started to run off the boat to rescue her pet. Mr. Hollister called to Joey firmly. You'd better not throw that, Joey. The boy paid no attention. He was just about to pitch the stick when a police car drove up to the dock. The cop will get you, Joey, Ricky shouted. In the car was Officer Cal. Before he could get out, Joey gave one look dropped the stick, and raced off. Officer Cal stepped from the car, waved to the Hollisters, then went inside the office of the municipal dock. Pete decided to run ashore to ask the policeman if he had heard anything about Bobby Reed. No, nothing new to report, the officer answered, so Pete told him about the boy his uncle had seen. Then we ought to have some word of Bobby in a day or two, Cal said. I'll report what you've told me. Pete related to the friendly officer their plans for a trip down the Muscong River in Uncle Russ's boat. We're going to hunt for Bobby too, he said. Let's make a race of it, the officer suggested. Okay, Pete agreed as Cal got into his car. Only you have a head start. So if you win, that'll be an even bigger feather in your cap, the policeman replied, grinning. After he had gone, the children played around the deck of the sweetie pie. Presently, Uncle Russ went into the cabin and returned with a map and a chart of the Muscong River. You better study these, John, he said to his brother. The chart shows the channels of the river and the spots where there are hidden rocks. After Mr. Hollister had looked at the chart a few minutes, he said, I think it would be a good idea for me to take these home and really study them tonight. Perhaps I can teach Pete to be the ship's navigator tomorrow. That would be fine, said his wife. But right now, I think we better stock up on some provisions for our trip before it gets any later. Good idea, her husband replied. There's a supermarket open tonight, Mother, Pam said. 
We can get there before it closes. Uncle Russ locked up the boat, then the Hollisters hurried to the station wagon. They soon arrived at the supermarket. How the children loved to shop there. We'll need a lot of food. You'd better get two baskets, Mrs. Hollister said. So the children wheeled two shiny shopping baskets from a pile that was stacked nearby. Sue looked up at Pete. Will you give me a ride, please? She asked. I'm tired. Sure. Pete leaned down, picked up his little sister, and put her into a basket carrier. Then they all started on a tour of the supermarket. Mr. Hollister picked up cartons of soda, while Mrs. Hollister and the children got meat, frozen vegetables, and lots of canned goods and fruit. Oh, this is going to be a wonderful trip, Holly exclaimed gleefully. Mother, may we buy some candy too? Mrs. Hollister said each one might pick out two bars. What fun it was, selecting the candy in the shiny wrappers. As the food shopping progressed, Ricky became tired of it and asked Uncle Russ to walk with him to the section where children's books and toys were sold. They went off and together looked them over. Then Uncle Russ said, let's you and I plan a little surprise. We'll buy a few things and you can hide them around the boat. You mean for a treasure hunt? Ricky asked, that's super. They decided on two tiny dolls, a whistle and a midget fire engine. I suppose I can't hide one for myself, Ricky remarked wistfully. Well, no, Uncle, R Uncle Russ replied. But how about picking out your own prize right now? Ricky had spied a gumball machine near the toys. He loved gum and decided on a handful of these. Uncle Russ gave him 10 pennies. Ricky put one into the machine, pressed the lever, and a black ball dropped out into the cup. Ricky popped the gum into his mouth and put another penny into the machine. But this time, no gum dropped out. I guess it's stuck, he said, and reached his finger up inside the slot. A moment later, a scared look came over the boy's face. Uncle Russ, I, I can't get my finger out, he wailed. His uncle rushed to his side and tried to help, but the finger was wedged tightly, and every time Ricky tried to pull it out, he cried in pain. What'll I do, he asked, tears in his eyes. A crowd had begun to gather, and several people offered advice, like, put some oil on it. Shake the machine, something's stuck. Uncle Russ had a different idea and asked the clerk where the manager was. He's coming this way now, was the reply. When the manager arrived, Uncle Russ said they would have to take the machine apart so Ricky could get his finger out. Have you a screwdriver handy? Uncle Russ asked. Yes, I have. The man went behind a counter and found a screwdriver and also a wedge, which he handed to Uncle Russ. Between them, they got the front of the machine off and suddenly Ricky began to laugh. There he stood, holding the shiny metal front with his left hand and one finger of his right hand still poked through it. You do look kind of silly, said a voice behind him. It was Holly, who had seen the crowd and come over. What happened, Ricky? He told her, while Uncle Russ opened a snap lock and released the boy's finger. Oh, that feels better, Ricky said. Thanks, Uncle Russ. The manager was tinkering with the machine. He finally got it working. Then he handed Ricky two handfuls of gum, saying, with my compliments, Sonny, sorry you got your finger pinched. Well, said Ricky, eyeing the gum, I guess it was worth it. The other Hollisters had already gone out to the car with the packages. When Ricky told them what had happened, Pete said he was sorry not to have seen his brother holding up a gun, gum machine. And I'm glad we didn't have to leave you stuck in the machine while the rest of us went on the river trip, his father teased. In a short time, he had driven back to the dock. The food was carried into the little galley and put away. 
Now we're all set for our trip, Mr. Hollister said. I'll go over the river chart tonight and we'll be down here first thing in the morning. The children were up early the next day. Directly after breakfast, Uncle Russ said goodbye and wished them well. And I do hope you find Bobby, he added. Let me know. We will. Mr. Hunter, the father of Anne and Jeff, offered to ride with the Hollisters to the boat and drive the station wagon back to their garage. How excited everyone was. Even White Nose meowed continually as Holly carried her to the sweetie pie. Don't you want to go? Holly asked her. Maybe she misses her babies, Sue spoke up. She patted the cat. Don't worry, we'll be back soon. Did anyone check the gasoline gauge? Asked Mr. Hollister. I'll do it, said Pete. He stepped over to the dashboard of the cruiser to look at it. The register's full, Skipper, the boy reported to his father. Very good, Seaman Pete, said Mr. Hollister, grinning. As they were about to cast off, Officer Cal came alongside. He said Bobby Reed had not been located yet. Good luck to you, he called as he started off. All my crew in their places, Mr. Hollister called. Aye, aye, sir, aye, aye, sir, came the giggling replies. Then let's shove off, Mr. Hollister said, his eyes twinkling. He pressed the starter. Nothing happened. He pressed it again. The children looked at one another. What was the matter? The sweetie pie would not start. 